and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 Mumbai studio. I'm Ekta Batrai watching your stocks this Friday afternoon. Well, it's definitely a dull day. We have uh, with us Shaina Mukadam to take all of your fundamental questions and Vaishali Parikh to handle all of your tech uh, questions or technical questions this afternoon on a day where I'm sure a lot of retail investors do have a lot of queries. So let's get going in terms of a couple of the queries that we have. But before we do that, our customary question to our technical analyst, Vaishali, um, you know, it's turning out to be a down day for us, but uh, would it be an opportunity to buy at lower levels? Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, actually, I won't say that because for now, Nifty is showing some exhaustion. So 22,500 is the support, intraday uh, support. So once we get there, I think that would be a good level to get into that. Whereas Bank Nifty, uh, prominent support lies at 48,400 for the day. So let's wait and watch. If we come to the, towards these uh, levels, it would be a favorable trade because, well, there will be a limited stop loss. Okay, all right. Uh, fair enough. Um... Well, let's get to the first question now. We have Abhishek Arora, who writes to us from New Delhi. He holds 100 shares of Adani Green, which he's bought at 1840. And uh, he's sitting on a profit on that one. And he's also uh, got 300 shares of Tata Power, which he's bought at 365. So he wants to know the future prospects of both these counters, which is basically Adani Green as well as Tata Power. He's sitting on a profit on both of them. So, Shaina, I'm going to come to you on this one first. Um, fundamentally, what would you recommend? See, by shorter term, there could be some further upside from here. I think fundamentally, if you look at it from the medium term, it would be wiser to book profits at current levels. Uh, of course, the demand for power is strong, and both the companies are seeing huge capacity addition, uh, especially in renewables. Uh, at the same time, if you look at valuations, I think they're pretty stretched for both of them. That is the first factor. Second is the debt, very high debt in both the companies. Uh, in fact, uh, Adani Green has much higher debt. They recently, you know, in the last three months, sorted out some part of their debt issues. But at the same time, debt remains very high. So that is going to keep a pressure on the overall profitability because you see interest costs, even if you see the last quarter, uh, improvement in uh, gross profit margins has been eaten away by higher interest costs. So P is likely to remain high because they are in an investment phase. Same with Tata Power. Tata Power also, of course, it looks slightly better than in terms of uh, debt to equity uh, versus Adani Green. At the same time, the problems are the same. Uh, valuations have started becoming a bit stretched, even for Tata Power. So I would say that it's better to take uh, part profits, you know, book some profits. Okay, all right. Uh, well, what would you recommend, Vaishani, on both of these stocks? So, uh, starting with Adani Green, I think uh, technically there is uh, still a lot of uh, scope for an upside target of around, say, let's to start with uh, 2,500. And, uh, well, for that, I would ask to keep a stop loss of 1,650. So, that would be the range because for now, there is no exhaustion in the trend. So, I would say hold, 1,650 should be the stop loss. But uh, Tata Power, I do agree, it has run up quite a bit and we have a technical target resistance of 450 levels. And which we saw in the first uh, part of the day today, there was a good spike and we saw a high of uh, 444. So we have asked, in fact, our clients to uh, book profit at these levels. Let's wait and watch. If we see a move past 450 and sustaining above that, that means it's ready for another target of 480. But failing which, I would say that yes, and again, uh, a good opportunity would arise at 380, 390 if we some, see some corrective move in this. 450 is the hurdle. Okay, all right. 450 is the hurdle on Tata Power. Let's get another query now. Shruti Mishra writes to us from New Delhi, holds 30 shares of ONGC, which is bought at 100 rupees. So, uh, sitting on a good profit there, she wants to know what to do, whether she can buy more shares. Well, Vaishali, what would you recommend in this one, sitting on a very good profit when it comes to ONGC, only wish that you would have bought a few more shares uh, considering the profit there. But nonetheless, what would you recommend on ONGC? Do you think that it's a hold at these levels? Uh, well, if she's bought it at such lower levels, continue holding. But 250, because market is a bit choppy, so 250 should be kept as a stop loss. And uh, I would say, in fact, it would be better if you buy at higher level if she still wants to add 
above 280 levels. So that gives a further conviction for the strength to continue for a target of 300, 320. Otherwise, 250 should be the level to watch for. Okay, fair enough. 250 should be the level that one should watch for. But uh, would one recommend, would, would you recommend uh, any other alternative in this uh, space? Not for now. Okay. Shaina, what about you? I will agree with Vaishali. It is either better to wait for some further dips up to about 250 to uh, buy or maybe higher levels. See, recently the government has uh, announced uh, the windfall tax again. So higher prices of crude are not really benefiting ONGC. So to some extent, you know, uh, the returns are uh, in a margin. At the same time, I think uh, most of their growth is going to come from overseas, how it performs in their uh, overseas business. So I think uh, it's better to wait. The stock has performed. Better to wait to buy it further at depths. Okay, all right. Uh, let's get in the third query for today. We have Riju Prasad who writes to us from Mumbai, holds 10 shares of Bharat Forge, which is bought at around 500, wants to know what to do, whether should one should stay invested or to book profits in Bharat Forge. So again, sitting on a profit on this one, uh, current market price is around 1180. Uh, so what would you recommend, Shaina, on this? Uh, you know, it was bought at a good price of around 500 odd rupees. Uh, do you think it's prudent to stay on or maybe uh, take some profits? No, he can stay on, but do keep a stop loss because uh, after that phenomenal December quarter numbers, the management has actually lowered their guidance for this quarter as well as for the next couple of quarters. Uh, so I would say that, uh, you know, while uh, it's a great long term stock, even at current levels, it may see some time bound, uh, you know, consolidation and uh, uh, a bit of correction. So one can hold if you're holding for the longer term, otherwise keep a stop loss. Okay. All right. And what about you, Vaishali? What would you recommend? I would say yes. Uh, actually, the stock is looking quite uh, strong even now. But 1080 should be the stop loss level because below that, that would negate the trend. But otherwise, if the uh, trend is intact and about 1200 levels, this stock is likely to do 1350, 1400 once again. So 1080 would be the stop loss level and 1200, about 1200 should confirm further strength for higher tax. Okay. Uh, Milin Pandey now writes to us from Nagpur, who is 57 show shares of Avenue Supermarts or DMART. And uh, look at that profit. Uh, I mean, spectacular. Uh, he wants to know what to do, whether he should hold or sell at current levels. Well, uh, what would you, uh, let's start with you, Vaishali, on this one. What would you recommend? So, well, depending on the time period that he's ready to hold on, because uh, it has already given a breakout. Technically, I would say even a breakout on a weekly chart. So that uh, shows further strength that this uh, stock is likely to go towards 5,200, 5,500. So not in a hurry. If he's not in a hurry, he should hold on to the stock. But if he's going to get perturbed, if the market corrects right now, then partial profit booking should not be ruled out. Okay. All right. Uh, and what about you, uh, Shaina? What would you recommend on uh, Avenue Supermarts? Should continue holding. We saw very good uh, volume growth numbers that the company has reported for the fourth quarter, 20%, which is much higher than what they reported, I think, 18% for the first nine months. Uh, so valuations are expensive, will remain expensive. But I think even the store addition that they are continuously doing uh, is like it's a stock that you hold for the long term. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's on Avenue Supermarts. It is a stock that you hold for the long term for sure. Uh, well, for the markets, there's really no recovery which has taken place at this point in time. We're still down around 190-odd points for the Nifty. The Zensex has recovered a tad bit from the day's low, but nothing really to write home about. Uh, well, in terms of specific stocks, we have Vodafone Idea, which is down around 4.6%. Remember, it's in news on account of its FPO. Uh, we have Loris Labs, which is sulking after Goldman initiated with a sell rating on that particular stock. Spark, which is down for another straight day after disappointing results from a key molecule. And a couple of others stand out, something like a Zomato, which is down around 2.5% at this point. Well, we need to take a short break, uh, but uh, we have an announcement to share with you all. We're launching CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar, CNBC TV 18 Accelerate Personal Finance Handbook with Sonia Shinoy, where she will be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday, 11th May onwards, 9 a.m. 
We'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances and learn how to grow your wealth, paid insurance, tax saving, managing your portfolio, retirement planning. There's lots to learn and lots to do. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live webinar is for you. We have limited seats, so don't miss this chance. Register now. Scan the QR code to register or log on to cnbctv18.com. We'll see you on the 11th of May. Welcome back. We still have with us Shaina Mukandam as well as Vaishali Parikh to answer all of your stock queries this afternoon. Let's get to another question now. We have uh, Nimrita uh, writing to us from Pune who holds 500 shares of Zagil prepaid which is bought at around 352 rupees. Remember it's a newer listing. Wants to know what to do whether to hold or sell this particular counter sitting on a loss on this one. Uh, so what would you recommend um, you know uh, Shaina on a couple of these stocks? New age stocks, you'd have to say, right now sitting on a loss. Uh, Shaina? If yeah, you can... it's a small cap uh, SaaS company. Yeah. Uh, not too much of fundamental data also to comment on it. Uh, valuations, if you look at it on pure just numbers, whatever little I have looks expensive. But they're very, uh, you know, good investors in the stock. So I think I will just wait and let the question pass for now. Okay, all right. Anything within that space, newer listing stocks, newer age stocks that you would recommend? Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, most of these stocks are listing at very high premiums. If you see most of them in the IT space, if you're talking. Uh, so I think uh, the overall IT space by itself is not that much uh, in the limelight in terms of the buy list, as well as some of the larger caps are now starting to become more attractive given the fact that the growth over the longer term is starting to look slightly better. So I think I will just wait for IT for now. Today we have TCS number. Let's see what the commentary. Okay, well, tough to give a technical call on, uh, you know, newer listings, Vaishali, but I'm just going to try it anyway with you. What would you recommend on this? Zagil prepaid? So, uh, with the data that I have, I think, uh, well, there is uh, some exhaustion seen. So, if 270 levels break, uh, I think it would go for further corrective move. So, right now, it is attempting to show a bounce. So, uh, below 270, it turns weak. And above 295, it would uh, bring in a further bounce, maybe towards 310, 320. So, uh, one needs to exit below 270. Okay, one needs to exit below 270. Uh, well, for the markets, at least uh, there is some amount of pressure which is coming in. The Nifty is now at the day's low, so down around 206 odd points. We have the uh, Sensex also, which is now corrected almost 700 odd points. There we go, 700 odd points shaved off from the Sensex. Remember that the US CPI data did definitely deter sentiment and it was a weak session for the US on Wednesday. They did recover on Thursday, but nonetheless, we are reacting to that data now in today's trading session, considering that um, we were closed on Thursday. Uh, so definitely some amount of trepidation coming in. Bank Nifty is also down around 453 odd points. Remember, we have the TCS numbers, which we need to also uh, take cognizance of. It will kick off earning season. We'll get an idea on what to expect from IT. And uh, that will happen this afternoon. So that will be important to watch for in terms of Q come Monday. Well, um, we have Arun now who writes to us from Chennai. He holds 50 shares of Power Grid, which is bought at 280. He says he wants to buy more and asks if uh, should he want for the stock to dip. I mean, should he buy it if the stock dips to 260, 270 levels? What would you recommend um, um, on this, Feshali? Is it a buy? So, uh, 260 level, it acts as a good, good support, but uh, well, not in a hurry because if we break, if Nifty breaks the levels of uh, 22,500, it calls for a good corrective move. So I would not uh, really confirm a buying uh, process at uh, 258, 260 levels. But yes, it's worth a look at 258, 260. If it holds on, then yes, it becomes a prominent support. Okay, all right. And what about you, uh, Shaina? What would you recommend on Power Grid? I would agree with Vaishali and uh, the investor's question. I suggest he waits and buys it at slightly lower levels, uh, maybe 260. 
but at the same time uh, you know it's a it's a good long term company recently they have uh, uh, commenced one of their projects uh, that is the nevely lignite uh, transmission uh, power ex ex uh, execution from there i think that is good over the medium to longer term uh, and i think it's better to buy it at dips because the question was more the dividend play so the dividend play is good but uh, i think you should wait Okay, all right. Just hold on, and that's the word which is coming in on power grid. Well, Rahul Bajaj writes to us from New Delhi with a question. He holds 20 shares of uh, Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency or IREDA, and he's bought it at around a hundred odd rupees. He's asking if uh, it is the right time to add more shares. Well, this one has really defied gravity. You know, from levels of around 50 odd rupees, it's rallied all the way to right. Levels of over 200 odd rupees, so it's corrected from there. Uh, do you think, Peshali, that there's upside uh, potential? Do you think that they one should add more shares and that you know those 52-week high levels of 200 rupees can be retested on IREDA? I would think so because uh, the chart is quite promising, but I would say accumulation would be the better idea. Because uh, we have a good support band right from one hundred and sixty-five to one forty-five level, so that is the prominent support band that we are looking at. So I would say st start accumulating, uh, keeping in mind one forty-five acts as a crucial support. Okay, and uh, what about you, uh, Shaina? What would you recommend on IREDA? Yeah, I would agree. It's better to buy on dips. It's a great, it's a good stock. If you see the March uh, ending numbers, which they have uh, given us an idea of the loan growth, it has it has doubled. So there is a strong momentum. At the same time, the stock has given you good returns. Uh, better to add on dips. Hold what you already got, but buy it on dips. Okay, hold what you've got, but buy on dips. Um, that's the word coming in on IREDA. We have a question on Yes Bank now. Shalini writes to us from Uttar Pradesh. She holds 50 shares of Yes Bank, which she's bought at 10 rupees, so she's sitting on a good profit there. And uh, she wants to know whether to hold, sell, or buy more shares. On an absolute basis, the profit doesn't look that much, but nonetheless, it's been a rally from 10 rupees to 24 rupees. Uh, do you think? Uh, what would you recommend on this one, on Yes Bank? Do you think it's a buy at these levels? Again, Vishali, over to you. Considering that you know the best levels it's seen recently is at over 30 odd rupees. So, do you think that it has potential to rescale back? It's in the process of making a higher bottom, but uh, well, so either you buy at twenty three, twenty three acts as a support, or you buy about twenty six levels because that would be getting the stock into back into the trend. And about twenty six, we would be looking at once again the targets of thirty thirty three. So, twenty three acts as a support, twenty six would be the breakout. So, that would be the way to go for this stock. Ah, uh, okay, all right, and uh, that's on uh, that's on the technicals. But China, what about the fundamentals? Any expectations from Yes Bank uh, from this quarter? Uh, expectations that would improve the balance sheet. They have been improving it, and also I think uh, growth also should be pretty decent for this time. Loan growth as well as uh, you know their write off should be lower. At the same time, I think now the uh, you know the momentum will. Come actually from what happens on their further fundraise. I believe uh, they are now looking for fresh investors, and they are valuing the company close to about eight to nine billion dollars. That works out very close to the current market cap. So therefore, unless some uh, some further development happens on that front, I don't see too much movement on either side for the stock. So one needs to hold, hold with a stop loss. And uh, watch what happens in terms of their further uh, fundraise program. Okay, all right. That's on Yes Bank. Jaren George now writes to us from Goa with an investment question. He says he's a new investor, wants to know which sector he should look at, and in which stocks he can make his investments. Well, China, this one is up your alley. Uh, what would you recommend? You know, the the number of investors which have increased in the Indian equity markets. Do you think that one should probably invest directly? Make a portfolio of their own, or go through uh, the mutual fund route. It's always better to have a mix, especially if you're not tracking <laughs> the market closely uh, on a regular basis. I would say daily, uh, because what happens is there are a lot of news-based uh, uh, events that happen. So, a mutual fund fund manager is better equipped to handle those. At the same time, the returns from direct investment in equity is always better if you can track the market regularly. Uh, and if you're a new investor, it is better to start with uh, 
quality stocks, large cap, which have some likely momentum in the medium term also. Let's start with banking. Then I think HDFC Bank could be an important uh, component of your portfolio. You can look for even ICICI Bank. Uh, similarly, you can look for defense. I think HAL has done very well. Still, there are other defense stocks like BEL also that look like they have some momentum. You have uh, pharmaceuticals. I think, Arbindo, today you discussed it in the morning. I watched you. I think, uh, you know, manufacturing Penji in India is going to be a very big thing for them because they were actually, uh, they had their own manufacturing in uh, China and which they were importing. So under the PLI scheme, manufacturing in India, I think an exporting would be a big thing for them over the medium to longer term, especially in terms of valuation also. You also could look at another large cap like Dr. Eddy in that space. IT, of course, TCS numbers are today, you can watch, but it's always been my favorite in terms of the large cap. You have Infosys. So there are a number of stocks, large cap, which you can start building your portfolio. And over a period of time, do add small caps and mid caps, because that is where the main kicker comes in for the medium to long term. Okay, all right. Uh, well, Shaina, as well as Vaishali, that's all the time that we have on the show. Uh, but before that, we do have another query which is coming in. In fact, uh, we did skip that. It's not an investment query, but it's a stock query. We have a hundred. We have Arun who writes to us from Chennai. He holds hundred shares of ITD Cementation, which is bought at around three hundred and five. He's asking if he can buy more shares. He's sitting on a profit. Uh, do you think it's wise to buy more shares at these levels, uh, Vaishali? Well, ITT cementation has already uh, given a good run up, but if he needs to buy, it always has to be a calculated risk. Right now, it's a good trend. So I would say 320 should act as a stop loss. And uh, well, above 350, the stock can do around 370 levels. So 320 should be the stop loss and we bought because right now the trend looks quite fine. Okay, all right. That's on ITD cementation. Quickly, uh, Shaina, would you have a view on this one? Yeah, this is one uh, small cap that, you know, one can add and be part of your portfolio. S strong balance sheet, very strong growth, uh, decent valuations. All right. Okay. Well, uh, Vaishali as well as Shaina, thanks very much for joining in and wishing you a great weekend as well. We'll see you on Monday. That's all the time that we have on the show. But do remember to email us your queries. We'll address them with our experts. Stay tuned. Closing bell will take you through the last hour of trade.